today. So let me uh, let me get into it. Uh, you know, with every uh, uh, every great car design, has a, there's a story behind it, and you're going to hear about that story today with the Cadenza. But I'd also like to kind of take a step back and talk about the story about the Kia brand a little bit. Uh, you know, we've been here since uh, 1994, and who can remember the first two vehicles that we introduced? Sportage and you forgot already the Sophia, the Sophia and the Sportage, the first two vehicles that came to the United States back in 1994, over 20, about 22 years ago. What a 22 years it's been! First uh, couple years introduced some new products. Didn't do too well in the 2001 JD Power Initial Quality Study. The red bar up there is the Kia brand, dead last in 2001. We couldn't go any further down. We were behind brands like Saab, Oldsmobile, Scion, Saturn, the Zuzu, Suzuki. Where are all those brands today? Anybody know? Gone. Gone. Exactly. They're gone. Not us. We kept investing, added new products to our portfolio. 2005, we were the 14th largest automotive brand in the United States, uh, 30th out of 36 brands in J.D. Power Initial Quality, so slowly getting better, expanding the lineup, had uh, eight vehicles back in 2008, but the problem was we didn't have any dedicated design, there was no consistency in the brand, and the company recognized that in order to move this brand forward and compete in this global marketplace, which was becoming more and more competitive, it had to do something. And so the company developed a strategy built around five tenets. One was that it had to invest heavily into the brand. We had to focus on quality. That was going to be the differentiator. We had to strengthen the brand. We had to elevate the ownership experience. And we had to identify and enter new segments for growth part of the reason why you're here today. And the first uh, investment that they made was in this gentleman, Mr. Peter Schreier, formerly of Audi, in the Audi TT vein. Peter had put together a team with the, uh, the intent of de de developing a consistent design language for the brand, because that's what it lacked. So he and his team came up with the brand design DNA built around what we affectionately call the Tiger Nose Grill. In 2007, the company started to provide the tools to the designers that they needed. Up until this point, Kia and Hyundai designers were sharing the same facilities. In 2007, we built a dedicated design studio on our US campus out in Irvine. I think many of you have been there. First time ever that they separated the two brands. In 2010, the European studio opened, and then in 2014, a dedicated Kia studio opened in Korea. So part of this investing in the brand, investing in uh, our uh, design team. In 2008, after a number of successful years of having individual team partnerships, the Kia brand partnered with the NBA, became the official automotive partner for the NBA. And that partnership has continued to evolve. In February of this year, we were the first brand to appear on a major league jersey. I know some of you will say, well, what soccer already does it, but among hockey, baseball, football, and basketball, we were the first brand to have their logo on a professional sports jersey. And we anticipate you'll see a lot more of that coming in the near future. In 2009, we opened our first, well, sorry, before we opened our first plant, we came out with the Soul, the first new product under our brand transformation. The Soul literally crushed the competition. Nissan Cube, Scion XB, Honda Element. Where are they now? Gone. There's a consistent message here. The Soul. Boxy design, really compelling product, great design, fun to drive, super functionality, great value, fantastic quality, really connected with consumers. And got a little help 
from our friends, the hamsters. Just uh, a couple months ago, we introduced our seventh spot featuring our hamsters called Share Some Soul. To date, it has had over 40 million views online. In fact, in last year, 2015, we had our best soul sales ever, 145,000 vehicles. When we introduced the vehicle back in 2009, we told this crowd that we thought we'd probably sell about 40 to 50,000 in its best year. 145,000 last year, we'll probably do even better this year. In 2009, we also introduced our first plants down in West Point, Georgia, which many of you had an opportunity to join us at back in October 2009. A $1.1 billion investment, over 15,000 jobs created in the former textile uh, town there in West Point, south uh, west of Atlanta. We introduced the Sorrento back then. It was the first vehicle that came out of the plant. And then in 2010, we introduced the Optima, which was also built down at KMMG. And the Optima is really the vehicle that we feel has transformed the brand the most. Soul came out in 2009, followed by the Forte and the Forte Coupe. The Sorrento came out in 2010, followed by the Sportage. But it was really the Optima competing in the highly competitive midsize sedan segment that really started to set this brand apart. The dynamic design, the compelling driving dynamics, the, uh, the interior, the quality, the value, it really resonated with consumers. In fact, Esquire magazine <coughs> called it the most gorgeous car under $20,000 back when it was first introduced. Also then in 2011, this was the dunk that was seen around the world. And this is really kind of that pivotal moment in the brand's history that we became part of pop culture. Blake Griffin dunked over the Optima in the NBA All-Star Slam Dunk Contest in February 2011. What a dunk it was. It really, having the Kia Optima right there, front and center, and him jumping over. The online media just went wild with it. It was really cool to see. And really, again, centered the brand within pop culture, which we continue to try to do every day. After a quiet year in 2012, 2013 marked the beginning of a new era when we introduced the Cadenza. What we were trying to signal was that there was something new and exciting happening with the Kia brand. And it's been very exciting ever since. In 2014, we came out with the K900. Remember what I said earlier, as part of our strategy, we were looking for new segments to enter into. Other OEMs were coming down into our, in the space that we traditionally occupied. So we said to ourselves, well, why can't we move up? Why can't we go into their space? Many people question it. Why? Why would Kia go into this territory? Because consumers were asking us. After we introduced the Optima, people said they wanted something a little bit bigger, something a little more refined, so we came up with the Cadenza. And after that, people said, wow, this is a fantastic vehicle, but you know, I'd like something maybe rear-wheel drive, maybe something a little bit bigger. K900. The car was so compelling, this gentleman, LeBron James, actually reached out to us and said, I'd like to drive that vehicle. He was playing for the Miami Heat at the time, set a vehicle down there through a drive shop. He loved it. And one thing led to another, and now he is an official partner with the Kia brand. 2015, another phenomenal year for the brand, really. The Kia brand, 10 years after the strategy was put in place, it became what we believe a global powerhouse. Seven Super Bowl ads, multiple race car victories in a number of different series, partnerships with FIFA World Cup, Australian Open, Billboard <coughs> Music Awards, College Football Hall of Fame, all designed to insert ourselves into sports, music, entertainment, pop culture, really showing up in unexpected places. And speaking of showing up in unexpected places, June 21st, 2016, 
not 2001 when we were dead last, 2016, number one in J.D. Power initial quality. The first time in 27 years a non-luxury brand held the top spot. Only one other non-luxury brand has been up there, and that was Toyota many years ago. Who would have thought? Anybody in this room ever would have thought the Kia brand would have been number one? No, probably not. But for years, dedicated focus on quality. It's not one big, huge thing. It's constant refinement of the product that led us here. But probably one of the most exciting moments in our company history. For those of us who have been there many steps of the way, very fun to see. <coughs> but we're not stopping. The brand that you knew maybe 15 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago is a very different brand. This is the new Kia. This is a world-class brand by every measure. J.D. Power, Consumer Reports, KBB. The list goes on and on in terms of recognition for the brand. 2015, our best year in terms of sales, eighth largest brand by volume. 2016, we anticipate will be even better in terms of volume. We're on track. We have another record year. We've had six of seven monthly records so far this year. But we're not stopping. That's just not who we are. That's not part of our DNA. We just started production at our second North American plant down in Monterey, Mexico, where we're building the new 4J. Another billion dollar investment for the Kia brand. And over the next five years, we're going to invest $12 billion to develop green and autonomous vehicle technologies. We're actively developing clean combustion, hybrid, plug-in, electric, and fuel cell vehicles. We promise to reduce and improve average fuel economy and greenhouse gases by 25%. We're launching 20 all-new or significantly redesigned vehicles, including the Optima Hybrid, the Plug-in Hybrid, and the Nero. And of course, the new Cadenza, which is why you're here today. <coughs> Again, while Kia was moving up, other brands were moving down. The media and consumers found the Cadenza a very compelling product. So much so that we've sold over 28,000 Cadenzas since we introduced it just a few years ago. That most of these owners love the vehicle. 61% of the owners have stayed loyal to the Kia brand, beating the industry, which is about 54%. So people love this product. They're coming back for more. They're excited to see what's next.